Hey y'all, this is Brown at I have Brown, and I want to talk a little bit about this film production company called Cinestate, which unfortunately closed its doors recently due to some behind the scenes drama, which was very unpleasant to find out about. But Cinestate um, has actually, or I should say, had actually been sort of a an artistic um, haven for um, independent film uh, makers in Dallas or Texas in general. And, you know, a lot of people, you know, were getting, you know, their foot in the door, so to speak. I mean, they were getting career opportunities, you know, through uh, being a part of Cine State. And um, some pretty good films came out of them, um, or out of their uh, production uh, banner. But some, some of the stuff that I, I found out uh, recently about them, um, it was very disheartening because um, when a production company uh, turns out a product that you like, but then you find out that behind the scenes they um, weren't as um, effective as they should have been in terms of, say, disciplining uh, a company official who uh, had done had committed some form of wrongdoing um, and just basically kept on turning a blind eye and said a company official was rather high up there. I mean, that's never a, a good sign, you know, of where their priorities are. And uh, the, the guy in question uh, was actually a sexual predator. And, uh, you know, some uh, people are calling him uh, Harvey Weinstein Jr. I mean, for us, in a sense that, you know, he was in charge of a very uh, successful uh, film company, uh, but he was, you know, using his power and authority to... Um, you know, sexually harass or in some cases assault women. And so when you find out about that, I mean, that's bad enough, but then you find out that, you know, the people in charge of the company uh, who are actually kind of the movers and shakers, I mean, who created it, you know, were basically, you know, covering for the guy and just, you know, turning a blind eye or downplaying, you know, his, you know, crimes, you know, that was very, you know, disappointing to hear. And, um, and, and it's, that's not the only thing. Um, you know, there, there were, um, a couple of productions. Um, I don't know, like all of the movies that this happened on, but there were a, a couple of productions wherein, uh, things would happen on set that, you know, the cast and crew, you know, were not okay with, but they were kind of, uh, put in a position where they had to go along with certain things or, um, you know, for example, uh, there was a movie called Satanic Panic, which I never saw, but it was like kind of a horror comedy. Um, but apparently, there was uh, there was supposed to be a sex scene uh, between, uh, I believe it was the main actress and um, one of the other actors. Um, I don't remember if it was supposed to be. If I don't remember if the guy was supposed to be a, a main actor or just you know. Uh, someone that they'd already um, had in mind for a brief, you know, part in a sex scene, but uh, whatever, whatever the case, uh, the guy, the guy who was supposed to be involved in the sex scene in question, uh, was well, proved to be unavailable, and so uh, some of the people in charge of making the film, uh, they said, "Hey, we got this guy who can do it," and it turns out this guy was a huge fanboy of the actress in question. And as, as far as I understand it, you know, the actress was very off put by the whole thing because, you know, she and the other guy who uh, she was originally supposed to, you know, do the sex scene with, you know, they'd gone through blocking, you know, they'd had a kind of a rapport and, you know, they were professionals, you know, they knew what, you know, how to play the scene. But then this guy comes along who, you know, you know, I get the impression he wasn't a professional, but was just a fanboy who happened to be in the right place at the right time, and, you know, is clearly turned on by being with her, um, yeah, that's a very uncomfortable situation, and I understand, you know, it's like, if you're filming a sex scene with someone, I mean, I'm, I can only imagine that, you know, you know, one or both of the parties are going to be turned on to some degree, but at the same time, a lot goes into making a sex scene. It's not just, Ooh, baby. It's like, there's a lot of, you know, you know, blocking, lighting, you know, filming and what have you. So, I mean, it's a job. I mean, but then to have, you know, this guy who's clearly not, you know, in a, a professional in, in this, 
you know, circumstance, you know, being put into a scene like this. I mean, I'm sure he enjoyed it, but, you know, apparently the actress uh, who um, was, you know, the focus of the scene, uh, and behind the scenes, she did not enjoy it, and she was very uncomfortable by the whole thing, and or she was made very uncomfortable by the whole thing, and so, you know, you had stuff like that going on, and so, um, but uh, an example that I can think of from a movie that I have seen from that company as a movie called uh, VFW, which is actually a pretty cool movie. I mean, it's a violent, you know, dark, you know, gruesome movie, but at the same time, you know, it's a good movie too. I mean, it's got a whole bunch of, you know, old time, you know, actors, you know, who, you know, kick all sorts of ass against, you know, a gang of, you know, drug addicted maniacs, you know, in a sort of semi- you know, apocalyptic city, um, but the whole setting is in a VFW um, bar, um, a Veterans of Foreign War uh, bar, and, you know, the, the patrons of this bar are veterans of mostly, you know, the Vietnam War, and they're put in a spot where, you know, basically they have to, you know, use all their combat experience and whatever's lying around to defend the place against, you know, a bunch of, you know, drug crazed maniacs. And it's like, it's kind of like Assault on Precinct, the John Carpenter classic, uh, Assault on Precinct 13, except much, much gorier. Um, and there's a lot more, you know, uh, there's a lot more darker hu humor, I guess you could say. Uh, so it's it's actually a pretty good movie, um, and and it's got a good cast too. I mean, you have um, Stephen Lang, uh, William Sadler, um, uh, Martin Cove. I mean, a whole bunch of people. And so it's actually a good movie if you like, you know, that kind of kind of entertainment. Um, and I and I own it. Um, but it wasn't until you know after you know I'd you know, watched the movie, you know, I should say a, a while after I had watched the movie and that, uh, I found out that, um, one of the actors, um, kind of an, you know, old time badass actor, um, Fred Williamson, uh, he was in movies like, uh, Vigilante and, uh, From Dusk Till Dawn. I mean, actually a pretty good actor, but okay. So behind the scenes, uh, one of the things that happened was, um, this was, I think, before the movie actually started shooting. Like, they were doing, like, a costume fitting. And um, and the people that were working with him were um, mostly women. And so Fred Williamson, though, uh, started sort of, um, you know, coming on to one of the women that was, you know, trying to, you know, get, it, get his wardrobe, you know, straightened out. And, you know, he starts, you know, inappropriately uh, inappropriately touching her um and not just like a you know playful you know bah, you know or anything like that it's like he, he apparently did it multiple times and um and so it's like they tried to you know i mean they were very uncomfortable by it but they tried to you know laugh it off in the moment but afterwards i mean they talked to some people and they were kind of like hey i'm not comfortable with this guy and so they actually had it to where um, you know, if, if you were a, a, a girl, you know, working with him, you know, basically kind of have a buddy system in place, you know, that kind of thing. And so he's saying, you know, either it was a misunderstanding or it didn't happen, I believe. Um, and, and it's like, it's one of those things where it's like, I like the movie and I like the actors and I'm certainly hoping that, I mean, it'd be nice to, you know, find out that this was just a case of, you know, someone's trying to get attention or something like that. But uh, there's enough you know, people that basically corroborate the story to where it's like, uh, unfortunately, it looks like it did happen. So, um, yeah, it, it was it was definitely a bummer to find that out. And something else that happened was um, I don't know, like, who the actors were, but some of the main actors, um, when it came to, say, like, the fight scenes... Uh, inadvertently, you know, hurt some of the um, extras, and you know, to a point where it's like, you know, safety wasn't a primary concern. It sounds like, which is kind of a bummer to hear. I mean, because it's like, you know, you hear, you see movies like this, and they look and they're violent and everything, but you know, for the most part, though, 
you, you know, most uh, film production companies worth their salt, you know, go out of their way to make sure that what you're seeing on screen is actually, you know, filmed and performed safely. And so, you know, you think that, you know, with all, you know, with all the stuff involved in making this particular movie, I mean, they would have, you know, taken the time and responsibility to, you know, be professional and, and film, make a safe environment, even if the movie itself is chaotic, you know, as a, as a, as a plot and what have you. But, but yeah, so it's just, uh, I know that stuff like this happens on, you know, every film production company, uh, but it's just a bummer to, you know, find it out, you know, with this particular movie and this particular company, because, you know, as I said, I haven't seen all the movies that came out of Cinestate, but at the same time, the ones I have seen, I actually liked. And so it's, it's a bummer to find out that, you know, one, you know, safety wasn't such a, you know, high priority, you know, in some of the movies. Um, I can't speak for all of them, but some of them safety was not a high priority apparently. Um, and also, I mean, it's a bummer to find out that, um, you know, certain, you know, you know, people were put in situations that they were not comfortable with and, you know, they made it known that they were not comfortable with it and yet they were still forced to go along with it, you know, that kind of thing. I mean, that's not something, that's something that should not be, you know, um, it's some, it, it's wrong. It, it's some, regardless of, you know, where, where you are, you know, on an ideology, uh, ideological standpoint, I mean, that's wrong. And, you know, one of the things that's come up is, um, the, the guy in charge of the company, not the one who was doing, you know, not the one who was a sexual predator, but the one who was in charge of the company and unfortunately kind of, you know, downplayed the guy's, you know, crimes. You know, one of the things he was saying is that this is like a, a partisan attack as in, you know, he was convinced that, you know, people, you know, on the Hollywood scene, like in, in, in a sense of, you know, uh, far left activists on the Hollywood scene, you know, were zoning in on, you know, the, you know, crimes and, you know, issues that were, you know, coming up with, you know, the, the movies that were being put out by Cinestate because, you know, most of those movies tended to have, you know, you know, right wing leaning, you know, sympathies. And so, I mean, it'd be one thing if that were the case, because, you know, let's be honest, Hollywood as a whole is a very liberal, you know, setting, you know, and that's not me trying to be an asshole or anything. It's just, it's true. You know, it's like, you know, if you have, you know, you know, a liberal actor and a conservative actor and both of them, you know, do the same crime, you know, odds are, you know, the liberal guys, or I should say the liberal actor is going to be given more leniency than say the conservative actor, you know, that kind of thing. Whereas, you know, in all honesty, it should be equal, you know? Uh, but I mean, that's just how it's always been in Hollywood, it seems like. Um, so, I mean, for a time, it was cool to see that, you know, you you didn't have to rely on Hollywood exclusively to get good movies. But at the same time though, you know, just because this uh, film production company was turning out good movies, that doesn't mean that, you know, they shouldn't be held accountable for um, negligence and, you know, crimes that were, you know, committed by some of their higher ranking personnel. And so, um, so I guess I just wanted to, you know, touch on that because I think what happens sometimes is, you know, people will get so um, invested in, say, a fictional, you know, property and, you know, when uh, they find out that, like, or when certain crimes, you know, committed by people involved in the property come to light, you know, you know, some people, it's like, you know, they try very hard to downplay whatever's going on. And I mean, it's one thing to wait until all the facts are in. Okay. I mean, wait until, you know, you know, every, you know, everything that's going on, you know, don't jump to conclusions, but once all the facts come to light and it's shown that yes, uh, these people involved with this, you know, beloved property did do these things, you know, that's when it's like, okay, you can't defend these people now. I mean, yes, you might be able to say, okay, I mean, yes, they, you know, may or may not have played a part in, you know, making, you know, the, 
you know, fictional property as good as it was, but at the same time, just because they had a hand in its success doesn't mean they should get a free pass on, you know, something they did wrong, you know, that kind of thing. And so I just wanted to, you know, throw that out there for a little bit because, I mean, if you watch my, if you watch my channel, then you you probably you know gather that I tend to be more you know right leaning than left, but I'm not above seeing that the left has its points. But at the same time, you know, just because you know something or someone might align more with you know what I believe from a political or ideological standpoint, that doesn't mean I'm gonna you know give them a free pass if they've done something wrong. You know, something that, okay, you know, regardless of whether you're a liberal or conservative, I mean, it's, you know, it, if this person did something wrong, they need to be held accountable. I mean, just as a, as a human being, you know, that kind of thing. So, you know, I guess I just wanted to throw it out there. Um, and and uh, if y'all got any thoughts on that, um, any feedback, I'd love to hear it. But um, hopefully, you know, this rambling you know made some sense but um if you like what you see here uh, please feel free to like and subscribe and uh if you got any comments please feel free to drop a line and let me know but y'all have a good day take care bye